So next tonight, right here on 2020, so much effort really around the world as we're on the air tonight, trying to find the clues to stop this tidal wave of the coronavirus cases. And because COVID-19 is a new viral illness, it knows no borders circulating around the globe. Doctors on the front lines are scrambling to try to deal with it. But there's another front line trying to find the viruses before they find us, and they're called virus hunters. Bats are absolutely amazing creatures. Bats are special. And there's a lot of interest right now in bats because of the viruses they carry. Bats are a known reservoir for coronaviruses. And we don't know why they're able to live with so many viruses at such a high level. They have a very interesting physiology. We don't fully understand it. It's possible bats could hold the key to understanding and maybe even conquering the coronavirus. They're exposed to a virus. They can stamp it right out. How they carry these pathogens without coming down with them is fascinating. The scientists don't know exactly where the new coronavirus came from. The leading theory was that this was a virus that most likely originated in bats, then likely jumped to infect an animal, and then appeared to jump to infect humans. On the front line are the virus hunters. These are the people that identify the source, determine the transmission, and then work to stop the spread of the virus. Virus hunters are scientists whose job it is to go out and find new viruses. They will be working in very remote areas around the world, catching wildlife, sampling them, and then testing the samples for new viruses. There are people who are going to markets where live animals are sold. They're going into caves where bats are flapping around, places where wild animals are migrating. What we try to do is try to hunt these viruses down in their natural um, reservoirs. I am one of the creators and executive producers of a new Netflix series called Pandemic, How to Prevent an Outbreak. The message of the docuseries, which is we are vulnerable all the time to new viruses coming out. Fortunately, there are people around the world working to try to protect us. People like Dr. Ghazi Kayali. He's a scientist who has traveled for years studying the link between diseases in humans and animals. When human activity come close to the animal populations, then we are providing a chance for these viruses to cross from the animal population to the human population. COVID-19 is not yet a pandemic. But even before this current outbreak, these brave detectives were on the trail of such pathogens. We have to follow the virus. Where is the virus located? In our documentary, Pandemic, you see Dennis Carroll. My main responsibility is trying to prevent and then control emerging viral threats. He's looking specifically at these avian types of strains, strains that are harbored in birds, because there's been a lot of fear that the next scary flu virus could come from birds. Our big main goal is to see what the prevalence of flu is in this area at this time with this population of ducks. Deb Carter, she's a field veterinarian, and she gets groups of hunters together. Does anyone need this duck? And they go out and capture the birds, testing to see what types of viruses might be migrating. Virus hunters are currently traveling around the world keeping an eye out for the next big disease. We plotted the origin of every known emerging disease. Hotspots are places in Southeast Asia, in Central and West Africa, in Latin America. And those are the places, if we really want to find the next pandemic before it emerges, that's where we need to be working. Wow. Their work is fascinating and daring all in oh, one. Yeah. You know, you were saying in your piece that this went, we believe, from a bat to an animal and then to humans. We don't know the animal Correct. in the middle. Correct. Yep, yeah, we don't. But so many people are asking questions about animals, David, from bats to that animal, and they're asking us about pets. About their pets here at home. Exactly. Only two known cases around the world so far of a pet 
um, with any sort of test for coronavirus. That's and right. you don't even think the pet actually was infected with it, might just have it on the nose? That's correct. These were two dogs that belonged to owners who were sick with coronavirus, and they could have just picked it up from just contact. They were not showing any symptoms. So the world of veterinary medicine watching pets very closely now and not just dogs, but cats also. Of course, of course. Yeah. And the bottom line tonight is there's no evidence that humans have passed it to pets or vice versa. That's correct. But common sense, if you know you're sick with coronavirus, you want to keep your distance from your pet just like you would from a person. That's right. They are our kids, too. That's right. Thanks, Jen. Still ahead here on 2020, this special edition. We are on the front lines tonight. Americans stocking up on supplies, emptying out the stores. You know, how much should you be preparing without creating panic in your community? And your questions tonight, they're still coming in about whether the virus is being spread through the air, and if so, how far does it travel? We'll answer that with the team here. And tonight, we are also now hearing from someone inside that nursing home in Washington State, a state where the death toll is rising, the conditions worsening, and what we're hearing from the inside tonight, and what you should want know if you have a relative in a nursing home. A lot more ahead. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.